I, uh, I have a, about 15 minutes to set the table, to drill down and get onto the good work. And, and Joyce has so aptly made the argument for why all of us are here. We do have public policymakers, and we are thrilled to have the deputy mayor, Rich Bury, with us. And he represents all the elected and public policy people who are supporting our work. Uh, we have education leaders from the pipeline, early childhood educators, K-12 educators, college and university educators, uh, workforce and career development educators. I will say that we have representation not only from SUNY, but also from CUNY and from uh, Hobart and William Smith, which represents our independent colleges in New York. So I just want you to know it's an inclusive family affair. We have a number of community organizations, local, uh, state, uh, connected nationally, and we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, we are also uh, welcoming foundations and corporate philanthropists, researchers, and community organizers, none of which, of course, would have been possible if Vanessa Three hadn't given it her all to get this third convening of our Cradle to Career Partnerships uh, on the docket today. So, Vanessa, thank you very much. And um, the good news for my 15 minutes is that Jeff Edmondson, who is the director of the national Strive Together Cradle to Career Network, can correct any falsities that I may offer, any mistakes, any gaps, so it gives me great license to uh, sort of give my message and uh, know that Jeff will be here in the morning to, uh, to make corrections. This is a conference that is going to focus on uh, data. And so when I push this button, oh, it takes off. So I'm going to go back here because Joyce mentioned David Leonhardt. And if you ever need an elevator speech, education, educating more people and educating them better is simply the best bet any society can make. And I'm telling you, you can memorize it. And so if anybody asks you your name, just light into this and they'll know what your, what your life's work is. Uh, Joyce mentioned that at uh, SUNY, we have a strategic plan the power of SUNY that includes sealing the leaks in the education pipeline. I've said on many campuses when I visited, and I would say this to you as organizational leaders, if you can't find it in your vision and mission statement, it's probably not a priority. So we at, at SUNY are trying to front load, if you will. I have to get just the right angle to make things move. So since this is a conference on data, there's one way we have described the challenge that really hits home. And we just slice out 109th graders knowing that we've lost students far before the ninth grade. But if we were in New York or across the country to start with 109th graders, roughly 65 to 75 percent of those 109th graders will graduate from high school. What do we know about that? Not all are ready for college, even though they walk out with a high school diploma. One of the things that really is telling for us is how many of those 109th graders, 41, will actually go directly into some kind of post-secondary experience. For those of you in the college and university sector, we worry about freshman to sophomore matriculation because we know that one of our goals is to keep our students, once we get them, keep them to completion. Of 109th graders, 19 or fewer will make it to the post-secondary completion, and we give them three years at a community college and six years at a baccalaureate institution. I want to just give you a little glimpse of a personal journey. The first slide will show you that in some ways what we were doing in Milwaukee between the Milwaukee Public Schools and the Milwaukee Teachers Association and the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee uh, was a prelude to what happened in Cincinnati. So Jim, if you click to the next slide, I see you there. Um, I sometimes say if you can get them to print it in the paper, it must be true. You know, this is the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel saying a group has come together to do this work. Uh, those are the real people. There was a day when uh, Ken and I could name every one of them, but it was a, a conglomerate of the stakeholders that you represent who all were at a common table. So you begin to see the threads of an idea building. 
uh, they had a an initiative uh, similar to what has evolved with uh, Strive, thinking about cradle to career, but this particular initiative was very focused on third and fourth grade and very focused on literacy and math. This is not Milwaukee, this is Cincinnati. I don't know the political, I've long since gone away from the blue states and the red states, but the blue here is Ohio and the red is Kentucky and the darker blue is a river, which we used to say is not the Great Wall of China. These two states and these four school districts began to meet in the same way that we conversed in Milwaukee around how we could stem the leaks in the education pipeline. Uh, the same stair step of, of attrition was true in Cincinnati that is true now in New York and still true in Ohio and other states. In, um, in the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky situation, only 11 of 109th graders we're making it to the finish line and a, a, only a few more in Cincinnati. So these people, and I could almost name every one of them, came together now about nine years ago, just to say how hard this work is. Pictures uh, of uh, university leaders, uh, community leaders, K-12 leaders, not unlike the picture in Milwaukee. Uh, all the logos tell the story, and I do know that in a number of your partnerships, you put the logos up just so you can see how many different stakeholders it takes uh, to graduate students successfully. So uh, that group of people who came together and said they wanted to stem the leaks in the education pipeline needed an idea on how to stem the leaks in the education pipeline. And as we often tell, it came together in a pub on a napkin. So don't go throwing any napkins away, especially if they have some kind of scribble on them because it could be a breakthrough idea. And just to say what uh, a napkin can do when you turn it over to a team of doctoral students. So go back to the napkin. This is cradle to career. And if you go to the real roadmap, the pinkish color is what we do in school and the purplish color is what we do after school, around school, in family and community. And this roadmap is as true today to the education pipeline as when it was drawn on that napkin now probably seven years ago and put into uh, a more, um, academic, I guess you would say, uh, framework because the students in our doctoral program actually did the research to say, this is what can happen when you intervene collectively. That said, that little roadmap has now been replicated in cities across the country. You can't take a Cincinnati roadmap and use it. You have to draw your own because we are, if nothing else, local. So Richmond drew their own and Seattle drew their own and Houston drew their own, but you know what? Cradle to career in school, in family and community. So in Cincinnati, uh, we at first thought we were doing a college access network, but then we decided we were striving for something more. Uh, Clinton County will like this. We wanted to call it Thrive, but Procter & Gamble already was using the word Thrive and they were a big supporter of our efforts. So we just changed the T to an S and off we went. That was the brand when we first launched uh, this partnership in Cincinnati. Uh, goals that will sound familiar to you, prepared uh, for kindergarten all the way through graduation, college and career. Uh, those uh, goals became metrics uh, in Cincinnati and the arrows really represent how many of the metrics that community was measuring were moving in a positive direction. We like to say trending positive because you can't overnight say we're going to go to 100% of everything. You got to trend in a positive direction. So what this most important piece of evidence says that from 09 to 2012, 89% of the metrics being accounted for were trending positive. 
that should give you a little relief. The pressure is on, but if you can show a positive trend, you're moving in the right direction. And just because there's a lot of emphasis on what happened in Cincinnati, maybe it was in the water, maybe it was the Ohio River, who knows? We have data like this now in Seattle popping up and in, in a number of our other communities across the country. Again, trending positive. So out of the Cincinnati work and thanks to the keen eye of uh, a, con a consulting firm called FIG writing in the Stanford Social Innovation Network magazine, we came to call this work Collective Impact. And through the work of Cincinnati, a framework has been developed that essentially tells us that we need the right people at the table. I think Jim Collins would say, in the right seats on the bus, convinced that there is a collective vision that this community can achieve holding ourselves accountable to those activities and investing wisely. Robert Jones was telling me just before we began, he reminded me that Target and all the other big dogs in Minneapolis finally said, we will only invest where we can see the outcomes of collective impact. And that is what turns the tide. When the investors understand that coming together is the answer, collective impact. And from that, a very complicated and comprehensive framework. Jeff Edmondson can explain this tomorrow, but we do have a standard. We don't want people to go to a community, have that community say, oh, we're doing Strive, and then people can say, but I can't find it. I don't know where it is. We have a set of standards you have to meet. So uh, I think I'm going to do more quickly than you could even believe, just to say that collective impact is shifting from the school and you know um, putting the school district in the barrel this phrase shooting fish in a barrel first i didn't i don't fish i don't barrel i can't get it but i think for too long we targeted the school district as the target of why we aren't doing better when all of us own the problem and so if you put the student in the center it really joins all of us in a common cause around our students uh, collective impact is not a thousand points of light it is getting our our collective act together. Sometimes we say it's reinventing the civic infrastructure, meaning that we are not just doing this as long as we have a grant, as long as we have a marginal investor. We are doing this for the long haul, which really means we have to change our behavior. Fundamentally, the hardest thing in the world to do, but to behave and act differently, get out of our silos and move in a common direction. So there's, a, you know, Strive has been making up images so that you could say, not a hammer, but a, shining a light on what we're doing well and where we are trending positive. So I think I have a couple more images, but let me just say that in New York, we are trying to organize this work at scale. One of the things we can say about SUNY and CUNY, and if you count us all together, you'd have arguably the biggest collective system, save for California, in the country and maybe in the world. And if we can get our collective act to get together, and if our United Ways can, and our community organizations can, and our K-12 systems can, we can move the dial. So this, uh, these little green dots that Je uh, Vanessa has created are places where we have partnerships represented today. And we have others who are interested, uh, particularly from my own personal perspective, since I said this was a bit of a journey. I'm proud to be a co-convener of the Albany Promise. Again, the logos only reflect how many stakeholders it takes <laughs> to drive an initiative like this. We have a vision and a mission and a set of goals, and uh, we've hammered them out over a long period of time. The Albany Promise has been at it for five years. So if there are people here who haven't started or are in year one, this is hard work. This is complex work. It takes time. Do not despair. We can do it. And this is the... Uh, Albany version of the roadmap. I think it's very colorful and um, very clear. And um, we probably didn't have our doctoral students working on it, uh, but 
or I was a doctoral student once, so I feel like I can poke at us. Uh, it's what the community needs to understand that in this particular cradle to career partnership, we are committed to uh, kindergarten readiness, third and fourth grade on grade level, high school success and college and career. It's simple, but deep, fundamental to our success. So thanks to Vanessa Threet and the work we're doing, we try to bring you together so that we can share best practices, maybe even share a few frustrations, learn from each other. And in a little uh, preview session earlier today, we even talked about the idea that if a student from South Bronx Rising Together were to happen to go to U Albany to college, the Albany Promise would adopt that young person from South Bronx to care for them in that stage of the pipeline. Isn't that cool, Vanessa? No more sleep. This is it. We got work to do. And that brings me to Vanessa. I know that I zoomed through that, but I would want you to know that you are not alone, that this is a great way of thinking about our work, that we are showing results that matter, and that we are going to share in this work together. I will be here for the rest of the time. I will keep my mouth shut. I just am so thrilled that you are all here and that once again, we will together move the dial. Now, Vanessa Three is the brains behind this operation. We are thrilled uh, to have Vanessa as our leader of the New York State Cradle to Career Alliance. And uh, she is really the person who got you here. And uh, she's going to make the introductions for our next component of the program. Vanessa, thank you, everybody.